This is a preview of something coming from EMC and VMware called VM Volumes that we're previewing at VMworld 2011. The idea of VM Volumes is to make storage uh, subsystems deal with VM level objects, virtual machines themselves, as the unit of management. First idea in VM Volumes is something called an IOD multiplexer or IOD mux. The idea here is to have a single control point for a block or for NAS device as opposed to, you know, tens or hundreds of LUNs that you're managing on a regular basis. Uh, managing at scale becomes a lot easier. So for example here, you can see that we've got a series of devices. There's this one here that's a block device. And if we uh, uh, take a look, there's other ones that are used for NAS, um, which are single points of uh, control traffic between the ESX host and the storage subsystem. Taking a look at it here on a future version of Unisphere on an EMC Unified Storage Platform, if we take a look at this VM Volume tab, you can see that we have these uh, IO uh, DMUX uh, devices, one for block, one for NAS. In fact, there's two for block. Uh, again, here you could have um, a single device managing very large capacity pools. So your, your management at scale problem gets significantly easier. Contrast that today where you need to have potentially tens or hundreds of uh, NFS volumes or uh, storage LUNs for all of your virtual machines. The next core idea, which is a big change, is that these capacity pools have got composite multi-property values. If you imagine that you've got these very large pools of capacity presented either via block protocols or NAS protocols, you obviously don't want all of the VMs in them to have the same properties. You want to have your own storage policy that uh, applies to the virtual machine or the VM volume, not to the LUN or the file system. As an example here, this one pool uh, highlighted above clearly has three properties. And if we go and we take a look at the detailed properties for uh, development, production, and test, you can see that not only do they have uh, <clears throat> pools of, of uh, spindle type or, or uh, auto tiering as an example policy, and in the future this could include all sorts of things, deduplication, compression, those sorts of data services, but also you can see that they've got their own properties around how often they're remotely replicated or snapshotted. Now again, Remember, this doesn't apply to the storage pool as a LUN or a file system. Instead, they are data services that are made available by that pool to VM volumes that get created within that pool. So again, think of uh, the idea of the data services become properties of VMs as opposed to properties of storage objects. So how does this surface to the VMware administrator? This is going to make their lives dramatically easier. Uh, if we take a look at the storage profiles within this future version of vSphere, um, you can see that uh, when we manage storage profiles and we take a look at the uh, storage capabilities that are presented by the storage subsystem, we've got those three uh, examples that we had shown earlier from within Unisphere. Now, again, the difference here uh, versus the current uh, implementation of VASA is that those you can have multiple capabilities within a pool. It's not tied to an individual LUN or, or a, a file system. Um, so here what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create... Uh, matching VM profiles that uh, are linked to those um, capabilities that the storage subsystem can present. So our various capabilities, we'll assign them matching names, and then from then on, uh, when we do provisioning, we're actually not thinking about uh, what data store to put things in, or even what data store pool per se, because um, those capacity pools can provide up multiple appropriate uh, storage capabilities as requested by an individual VM. So we've shown a couple of basic ideas, the idea that you communicate to the array via NAS or block together via these IOD multiplexers, and that multiple storage capabilities can pre be presented by a pool. Now let's look at a common workflow and you'll see how much has changed by this model and how much it's simplified. Let's create a basic VM on a NAS connected and, uh, VM volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to say I'd like to create a new virtual machine. and uh, this virtual machine, when we go through the provisioning logic, it'll look very familiar to anyone who's used vCenter before. In fact, that's one of the great things about uh, the idea of VM volumes is that uh, we're dramatically simplifying things and abstracting storage models to make them large pools with uh, sophisticated capabilities and making management at scale much, much easier. But it, doesn't, uh, uh, it does this in a way that's very non-disruptive to the current uh, set of technologies that 
uh, people are used to and the things that run on top of vSphere. Um, so as we go through and we create various things, we're going to end up in the phase where we uh, create the virtual machine disks. And you'll notice that the uh, workflow was uh, very common to the existing workflow that people would have existed uh, previously with Vasa. Now, you know, one thing that's important is that in previous, in the current kind of implementations, it would need to place the data store, uh, place the virtual machine in a data store that met the properties of the individual virtual machine. There's a significant difference here, which is that it's creating the virtual machine in a capacity pool, and the capacity pool is creating a VM volume uh, for just that virtual machine with the capabilities that are requested by the vCenter uh, UI through the provisioning model. Let's pop over to uh, Unisphere and see what this looks like from um, uh, the other side of the uh, picture. In Unisphere, going to the VM volumes, you can see here that a VM volume has been created inside that capacity pool, um, which has the same name as the virtual machine. And you can notice that there's a meta volume, and um, uh, the meta volume contains a series of information about the VM itself, and then the data VM volumes, which are the actual um, uh, VM volumes that are used for the VM decay functions. But the point here is that you now have got a VM volume with the core set of capabilities as requested by that individual VM uh, that are living within a capacity pool. Again, think about how this dramatically simplifies things for VMware administrators. No longer do the behaviors of an individual VM or even their provisioning depend on underlying capabilities. Now let's do a more complex workflow. Let's create a VM, assign it a storage profile, then create a clone of that VM and put on a different storage profile and then see how that applies to the underlying VM volumes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new VM. Uh, since we're talking about Acme and Inatech, uh, we'll do a TPS report example. So we're going to do one here, which is, uh, you know, the dev example. Uh, we're going to go through and we're going to put it onto the dev uh, 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 storage profile that we created earlier. So remember, what does this mean? It means it's going to create a VM volume using the capabilities that are for that uh, individual profile within the capacity pool. Um, we're going to complete the operation, and uh, the VM goes off and gets created. Again, notice that the storage provisioning tasks are completely abstracted out, and uh, here we're creating a VM volume within the capacity pool with that dev kind of profile. Now, the question is, is let's uh, create a clone of this operation. So um, the interesting thing about this individual workflow is it also highlights an important idea of VVOL uh, uh, or VM volumes, which is that the uh, uh, storage subsystems hardware assists and all of the capabilities of VAI uh, continue to be something that can be leveraged by uh, vSphere. So for example, here, as we do a clone, we're leveraging all the work that we're doing today around VAI for hardware assists on block and for NAS to do the heavy lifting of creating the clone operations. Um, so uh, here we're going to create a clone of that individual VM. Uh, we're going to uh, put it onto that uh, same development tier, even though this is going to be a production um, uh, VM. And uh, what's going to occur here is, of course, we're going to create another series of VM volumes within the capacity pool that meet the development profile uh, for the storage capabilities that are required, which again can uh, reflect many, many capabilities within the storage subsystem. Again, beautiful thing about the idea of VM volumes is that all of the fantastic EMC data services that we provide at the underlying storage subsystem can be leveraged uh, uh, up through the VMware layer in this simple and easy way. Again, not tied to LUNs or file systems, but individual VM level objects. So as this operation completes, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the uh, uh, storage capabilities and storage profile of that individual VM. One other thing that's probably worth noting here is that uh, this is actually a block operation that we're completing in this particular example. The previous one was on NAS. Notice how much block and NAS management models and, and interactions are completely unified via this uh, new abstraction model. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we take a look at the storage profiles. You can see that both uh, TPS report server dev and prod are in that same pool. Let's go into that individual VM and let's edit its uh, properties. Of course, all of this stuff can be done uh, programmatically. And let's change its, its profile to EMC production and propagate that down to the storage subsystem. Now, what's fascinating here, right, is that today what this would do is it would move the VM via a storage vMotion from one uh, data store to another that matches that profile because the profile and capabilities are tied not to the VM but to the NFS uh, export or to the LUN. Um, what occurs here is that since the pool can provide those uh, capabilities at the VM vol uh, volume level of granularity is that uh, it stays within the capacity pool the storage subsystem just changes the data services that it's providing to that VM volume. In this third workflow, we're just going to show and highlight that you can do all of the things that we've done in the previous examples, and you can do it programmatically. So here via the command line, and what we're going to do is we're going to have both the uh, ESX view and the Unisphere view at the same time. Here what we're going to do is we're going to create a VM, vol uh, VM volume for a virtual machine. Uh, in this case, we're creating uh, just the meta volume. So this contains the stuff that identifies the VM. It can contain, uh, you know, all of the properties of the VM. It's not the uh, data disk, so to speak. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, the VMDK and its associated uh, VM volume. So again, that these things linked together, in essence, can uh, be treated as a, as a VApp, and you can have multiple uh, VM uh, volumes treated together in this coordinated fashion. So here you can see we've created both the metadata and uh, uh, the meta VM volume and the data VM volume uh, for this particular example. Um, and here you can see that this is a particular example where we're doing it on a, uh, a NAS connected system. Um, so again, highlighting this extreme unification between block and NAS from management and, and uh, uh, functional capabilities. Um, the other thing, of course, is that when you're doing things programmatically, you can do uh, many of them at once. So uh, why don't we do a similar volume where we create a large number of VM volumes programmatically. In this case, we'll create uh, 10. So very similar process to what we did before. Uh, the only thing that we're highlighting here is you can do it at a much larger um, volume if you're doing it programmatically, and uh, you can do many, many operations in a row. So off we go. We're going to start to create um, multiple meta VM volumes and multiple data VM volumes for those individual VMs. And if we take a look uh, within uh, Unisphere UI, uh, these individual VMs are being created on the fly here. Um, so again, a very interesting idea here with uh, VM volumes. To, to kind of recap some core principles, uh, dramatic simplification, dramatic unification. The idea here is that you no longer uh, scale up the number of storage devices that you're managing as you manage the number of VMs. Uh, you have these IO uh, multiplex, uh, IO demultiplexers um, that are the mode of communication between the storage subsystem and uh, the vSphere environment. And that uh, individual VMs create VM volumes within large capacity pools. And those capacity pools can surface multiple different capabilities and values um, uh, depending on what the individual uh, VMs are requesting as part of their storage profiles.